What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. All right, yesterday, GameStop somehow sunk to like a new low. It's, it's not good right now. What happened yesterday, which we're gonna go over today, is the result of weeks of pent up frustration, anger, and fear by the employees, and GameStop just looks really bad right now. We're gonna go over what's happened and why GameStop all of a sudden is apparently essential next to pharmacies and grocery stores. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a thing now. Also, we gotta talk about a new game that's coming from the creators of The Messenger, uh, but they're going in a different direction from like a Ninja Gaiden platforming game, an RPG that reminds me a little bit of Chrono Trigger. Also, there's a pretty good sale you might wanna check out on the eShop from Square. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're brand new here, hit that red subscribe button down below. We are gonna start today with Microsoft and their Xbox Series X after we had the announcement from Sony for the PlayStation 5, specifically around backwards compatibility. Somehow we came back around to the Series X. I've seen this a lot online about how backwards compatible is that thing really? And uh, it's, I mean, if you match it up next to Sony, it seems to be better but Sony hasn't been super clear on their backwards compatibility. In fact, you can see the tweet here that um, Xbox put out in response to another person specifically asking about backwards compatibility, saying all games that are currently backwards compatible, yes, plus all Xbox One games. So, of course, we know Microsoft has been working in a game-by-game -game basis. Sounds like what Sony's doing, but for the PS4. Now, those ones would be for the 360, and the original Xbox Sounds like every Xbox One game right now is just gonna work on the Series X. They even go on further to say that if you have an external hard drive with games loaded up for your Xbox One now, you can just plug it into your Series X. It will read off that hard drive and you can play them like normal. Obviously, if you have your account tied to that Series X, but that would of course be at Xbox One speeds because you are tied to that hard drive, but copied over to that uh, much faster SSD and you'll be rolling at what Series X aims for much quicker using something like solid state uh, storage. But yeah, I mean, this this is big for Microsoft. They, uh, they're they gonna be beating Sony right away in the backwards compatibility field, even going all the way back to 2001 with the original Xbox. Oh, also, Sam Fisher got upgraded. I know, I I'm excited too, this is big. See, before of course he was on cell phones and it was like, oh, he's on phones, why? He's getting upgraded to Ghost Recon Breakpoint, one of Ubisoft's best games ever. Yeah. Ubisoft, what are you doing? Like they put out this trailer, March 24th, there's going to be this limited event that's gonna take place where obviously you see, uh, you could hear Sam Fisher, Michael Ironside with the voice and it, it sounds great. I was like, oh wow, we got the, cause it popped up and it had the Splinter Cell lights, you know, the three green lights. I, I said, wait a minute, are we getting something happen with Splinter Cell? Nope, that's a ghost recon breakpoint event. They keep doing this. Like Ubisoft, I'm sure you're, you're trying to figure something out with Splinter Cell, but putting it into breakpoint, Come on, like, <laughs> why do you keep doing this? I, okay, look, it's better than cell phones, but like, okay, tell you what, Ubisoft, give me that next generation Splinter Cell appearance where it's like his, his own game straight up on like the Series X and the PlayStation 5 and all will be forgiven. But until then, like, come on, Ubisoft. Also, big news for Octopath Traveler. It hit two million units sold, which for a very, we'll say very classic JRPG, that's really good. Like Square probably looks at that and says, wow, this went really well. Sequel maybe? Maybe another game in, the, in that kind of that kind of uh, art style, that kind of visual style? That's what I would like to see. Final Fantasy VI, can we do that? Can we move that into that? That would be cool. Uh, but yes, Octopath Traveler, two million units sold, and to celebrate, they have now slashed the price in half, so it is $30. Of course, if you're unsure about it still, that demo is still available, you can go check it out. But if you are a classic JRPG fan, or maybe you've been checking it out and you're like, I don't know, maybe, it is a very good game. And at $30, you're gonna get your money's worth for what could easily be a 100-hour game, no sweat. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. We're gonna go with GameStop right away because what they are doing as a corporation is, it's pretty embarrassing, to be honest. I, I was a, a small business owner for a while and I wouldn't put my employees in the situation that they are in currently from GameStop. Do you know what I would do? I would work the shift. That's what I would do if there was two feet of snow on the ground outside and I didn't feel like closing. Well, I guess I'm gonna run that shift and the employees are gonna be at home. That's just their responsibility. I would take, seems like it works a bit different at GameStop. Specifically, I'm curious, before we get into some of this here, 
are the are the corporate heads are they at home working right now or are they in the corporate office? What do you think about that as we go uh, as we go through this right now? So of course we know there's situation all across the world and in the United States it's handled by a state by state basis pretty much. Some states are issuing straight up like semi lockdown if you're a non essential business you're gonna be closed for a little while as they try to contain the spread of the virus that is currently going around. YouTube bots, please leave the video alone. <laughs> but yes, there is a, there is obviously an issue and GameStop has remained open. Not only have they remained open, they have apparently been lacking cleaning supplies and sanitary products, specifically hand sanitizer and wipes to clean everything off. And if you think about GameStop for a second, you go in there, it's very confined, right? It's very closed, and there's boxes, merchandise, stuff that people would be touching constantly. It seems like a hotbed for that virus to just start spreading around pretty easily, wouldn't you say? Well, GameStop addressed different things when it came to the hand sanitizer. They were trying to source it, and if they could not, you're allowed to go out and buy it from a store near you and expense it to the company. Good luck with that one, right? But any of the companies or stores that I've had to go to for grocery stores, et cetera, or Walmarts, it, a lot of times they just have hand sanitizer everywhere, little stations that you go up to, right? Well, I was gonna be covering this and I said, how about I go to a GameStop to check it out? I know, probably not the smartest idea, but I said, I, I gotta know. So I went to one yesterday and, uh, oh, they were also selling Doom Eternal early, so that was interesting, but uh, they did, have tape on the floor and I did spot some wipes behind the counter. However, they did not have any type of hand sanitizer at all. And I double checked and asked. The tape on the floor apparently was to divide us up so that if you're in line, you have to stay in this box as you move forward so we can apparently keep four feet away. That's how it looked like it was the distance between. So it has not been good overall for GameStop in this whole situation. In fact, their subreddit is kind of turned upside down. They were usually pretty positive with GameStop and would have fun on there, and it's turned into a whole, I'm quitting today because this is absolutely ridiculous. But as these different states are saying, if you're not essential, you gotta shut down for now. We'll work everything out through tax breaks, which I'm sure GameStop is still gonna take. Uh, but but there there is a there's an issue here, right? GameStop's not essential, at least I thought they were. Well, GameStop decided to figure that one out real quick. They sent this company-wide memo out to all of the different stores, and this is the big thing that exploded yesterday. We're gonna take a look at that right here. Due to the products we carry that enable and enhance our customers' experience in working from home, we believe GameStop is classified as essential retail and therefore is able to remain open during this time. We have received reports of local authorities visiting stores in an attempt to enforce closure despite our classification. Store managers are approved to provide the document linked below to law enforcement as needed. So consider this for a second, okay? You're working at GameStop. You're, uh, I don't know, a, a senior game advisor. So like $10 or $11 an hour, something like that. And your job right now is to go up to the several police officers who have shown up to tell you you can't be open because you are non-essential. Do you, do you argue with them? Do you show them that? Do you, and if they say too bad, they shut down? That's kind of the question, that's the conundrum that these these uh, employees are put in right now and why they're not happy. And you know what, I don't really blame them. That's, that is a ridiculous thing to ask your employees to do, to tell police officers or law enforcement, they may, may be showing up to tell you you're not essential, so you're being shut down, to tell them to go away because you have a letter from corporate that says you're allowed to be open. Now this spilled over online and a little later, a couple hours later, GameStop issued this here, which shows several precautions that they say they are taking, none of which include shutting down certain locations, nothing like that, but they are altering their hours. They did start selling Animal Crossing a little bit early as well, but they are going to be reducing store operations from 12 to 8 p.m. until March 29th. They will also be stopping any and all trade-ins any different game events they were gonna do or midnight launches are put on hold for now. But the biggest thing is they are indeed stopping trade-ins. That is, that, I mean, that's that's what you should do. You shouldn't really be taking stuff in right now, controllers and yeah, I, I get that. But at this point, that's like the biggest thing that GameStop does that makes them even different at all in retail. Like, what, I just close until March 29th and that is what everyone's thinking. But there's one issue there. Can GameStop close until March 29th? Because I do see a very desperate company here, especially now. So desperate that 
Yes, employees right now are questioning on that subreddit, my livelihood or my well-being? Like the, yeah, that, that is, that's something else right there. That, that is insane. Now there's one other thing I want to point out because at the beginning I asked what about the corporate uh, office and if they are, the higher ups are going in to the office, well, I'm still not sure that would be an interesting thing to find out, but there was something else that took place. Camelot 331 allegedly was on a call and you can hear several voices, store managers or people at the corporate office asking questions to them and they don't seem happy. They seem concerned, scared, worried, unsure as how all this working. And I gotta be honest, GameStop seems very unsure as well. But one thing that keeps coming up is that the traffic is much higher. They're making more money right now, and that's one of the reasons they don't want to close. It is literally profits over anything else right now. GameStop is a desperate company. Now, I don't know the legalities around recording a conference call and then putting it online, but it is there if you wanna go check it out on Camelot331's channel. The link is down below, and it is kinda eye-opening. What's happening right now with GameStop is sad. It is, as, as a former business owner myself, this isn't really something I would have ever thought of doing with my employees. And uh, it's a shame, to be honest. At this point, I think a lot of employees with GameStop are realizing how expendable GameStop views them. That isn't good. Like that, that that's gonna stick with GameStop for a long, long time. And honestly, Reggie starts at the end of April. I, I don't even think he can save this one. But I guess my last message to GameStop that they probably won't do is uh, probably shut down for a bit. Honestly, until you're, you're marking out March 29th for whatever reason, shut down till then. Animal Crossing's out today along with Doom. Get those out to pre-order customers and do your online sales like you normally would. Sure, you're not around tons of customers in a day. One person on the conference call said 70 transactions by midday. It's a lot of people coming through and coming into contact with your employees. So that would be my Best advice is shut down for probably the next week and a half or so. But let me know what you guys think about this situation because it is definitely not a good look for GameStop. Next up, let's talk about some eShop deals. Figure I would point these out to you guys just in case you are just inside over the weekend and you're looking for something to do. Although, again, Doom and Animal Crossing are out. Two games I'll be playing very heavily this weekend. But let's say you're looking for a good JRPG or, or something action RPG oriented. Square is usually a good company to go to. And on the eShop, they have marked a lot of stuff down, maybe anticipating digital sales being up just to look a bit more enticing, but this is on Nintendo's site. You can see this here, and there are a couple bunch of them on here. Of course, you have the Dragon Quest games on sale, although they are a little cheaper as it is anyway. Like we're talking like going from like $5 to $4, but I did spot Onanaki and that is $20 off. That's that's pretty good, I would say. Final Fantasy 12 is not a bad way to go at half off. You also have Lost Sphere, which is Okay, but that got marked down to $30. I Am Setsuna is also pretty cheap as well. Basically, all of the Final Fantasy games, if you have never played them, are uh, great, great values. Final Fantasy IX at about $10 is great. Romancing Saga 3 is pretty good. You also have Star Ocean First Departure R marked down to just under $17. Honestly, there's a lot of value in some of these games, especially the older Final Fantasy games, but I will point out World of Final Fantasy Maxima is kind of a wild card in there at $20. If you have never played that one, that is a pretty cool, almost like Pokemon mixed with Final Fantasy style game. If you're looking for something a bit different from your traditional JRPG uh, Final Fantasy style game, that might be one to check out. But pretty good values, pretty good prices there for Square Enix's sale, I would go check it out. Next up, let's talk about GDC. Of course, GDC has been canceled. We would have been pretty much in the midst of it right now, or at least seeing a bunch of information coming out for it. But they did say they were going to reschedule it for later in the summer, and you know what? They are going to do that. I am curious how the event will go over now, although there will still be developers who probably wanna go out and it is going to happen before the launch of the next generation systems, which was going to be, I think, a big focus there, probably alongside of VR as well. But they have now rescheduled it to the first week of August. So August 4th to the 6th, that will be in San Francisco. So they will be having it kind of like normal there, but, but, 
Again, I am a little concerned with how many people will show up. There's still going to be that concern, of course, around everything with illnesses going on currently. Even though that is in August, that, that thought will still be out there. We'll see if that's far enough out to where it's not that big of a deal anymore. At least not as big of a deal as it is now. Again, people will still be conscious of it, of course. But again, I'm also curious how... Will this help the developers? Because instead of March, we're going all the way to August for information about next-gen platforms. I don't know. I mean, it's good they're still having it and they're not missing the year and then going all the way into next March when the platforms are already out and a couple months deep. But we'll see what comes of it. I don't know if we'll even really hear a lot of news out of it because I think a lot of the really interesting information like that PS5 keynote was like the big stuff, but hey, we'll see. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a really cool looking Kickstarter from a studio whose indie game I really enjoyed, which is The Messenger. Really like that game, great 2D platformer. If you have not played it, absolutely go check it out. That is the game where you would switch between like 8-bit and 16-bit. They kind of had this cloud hopping where you'd hit and be able to jump again. And there were some really neat puzzles and mechanics thrown in there. Awesome platforming game and they are now going to be attempting a prequel to that game. But what I really like about this is they're not just going to do another like platforming game, they're gonna change it up. And I, I like that because it, I'm sure it presents more of a challenge to them and it's probably a lot more interesting to them to do something completely different like say an RPG versus just another platforming game, something they probably feel they've already accomplished with the Messenger. Well, this went on Kickstarter and you can see it here because it smashed its $90,000 goal like immediately. Day one, they're good. Like the goal has been hit. Now they will have stretch goals, of course, but they said this is from Sabotage Studio announcing Sea of Stars, a turn-based RPG inspired by the classics and a prequel story set in the Messenger's universe. Now, this is not set to be delivered through your Kickstarter until March of 2022. So they still have quite a bit of time to get this thing done and they were obviously looking for funding to get it done. But what I really like about this, they have taken some, I'll say inspiration from Chrono Trigger, for example, as when you run around and you end up in a battle, everything takes place there. It doesn't appear to have any kind of transition screen. You run into an enemy, everyone kind of splits out and then you start fighting right there on the field. Now, they are gonna be using, according to them, like uh, the lighting rendering engine that they've been using with something like the Messenger. And visually it has that cross between like retro style, but still kind of looks new. It's hard to describe. If you play the messenger, you'll see what I, I'm, I'm kind of talking about there. But I like what I'm seeing here. They also say there's no real grinding. You can go off and level up, but the story is set up in a way that it will keep you at a, a good level, but one that will still challenge you. And I like those kind of games where you don't run into a spot where you're like, well, guess I gotta go grind over in that field for a couple of hours. That's that's usually good game design if you have to run through and you can just technically get through the game with what you have in front of you. And if you wanna get overpowered, you can. But I will keep an eye on this one, see how it goes. It's already funded, so at this point, stretch goals, but it is coming out, all consoles it says, and PC in 2022. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Sage11 saying, the only flaw with the reveal was this was not a reveal. This was something intended for GDC that someone inside Sony mistakenly repurposed as a reveal when they let the criticism and all the Xbox news get to them. Now this was, their one problem I think is this was definitely supposed to be something just at GDC and then the, any of the information that would have gone to Eurogamer, like we saw them do a big you know, readout for, a big write-up, that's what we would have seen. We would have seen the spec sheet, they would have explained the 3D audio to us, the SSD. Mark Cerny talking for 52 minutes was really just interesting overall to the people who are gonna be developing for the system. There are probably some who are like, oh, that's kinda cool, right? But it's not all that stuff is for them unless you are developing for that system or you're an aspiring developer. The problem is it was kind of hyped up and then it was a live stream and it, people were expecting a lot out of that. Even though it was talked about how, hey, there's probably not gonna be a system or even games there, people still had their hype levels on high, right? But I think if they had just dropped that, like, hey, the, here's Mark Sarney talking about the road to the PS5 without a big build up in a live stream, just a straight up drop on YouTube, I think there would have been less impact and I think people wouldn't have gone overboard and gotten crazy with it. But uh, yeah, that's my thoughts there. Maybe next time we'll finally see the console from Sony, but we might get 
five months to launch and that's when we'll see the thing. That'll be a little crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for News Wave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether there's GameStop situation, should they just shut down? Or do you think at this point it's up to the employees to just say, hey, look, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not coming in like that. You can fire us if you want. There was actually uh, a posting on Reddit of people at the stores, managers just sending an email back to corporate saying, after Friday night, 7 p.m., we're out. We're not opening until non-essential businesses are back open as ordered by the state governments. But let me know. Let me know what you guys think about that situation with GameStop. Also, what about Sea of Stars? What do you think about the look on that one? And did you see any good eShop titles there on sale from Square that you wanted to pick up? Thanks, guys, for watching. Have a great weekend. Stay inside. Play some video games. Spend some time with the family. I'll be back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time for Newswave.